So this is um, Gelder Rose, Cramp Bark, Viburnumopolis. And what people tend to do is cut the young shoots. So it's actually the bark that we would be using medicinally as a muscle relaxant. And we would just shave off the bark like that, like so. And you can t understand how long it would take to get a whole load of bark off. You would let that dry in an airing cupboard or in an oven um, at a low heat. And then you put it in a grinder and you could use that as a powder. So you could just introduce that to your food. If you don't want to grind it up and add it to food, you could just chop it up into small pieces and make a decoction, which would involve bo boiling the bark for about 20 minutes and then drinking the tea. And that would really help with muscle uh, cramps. So tight calves or period pains, that kind of thing. It also lowers blood pressure too. So sometimes it's put into blends when people are quite stressed and quite tense. It just helps them relax a bit more. You can tell by the red berries and the shape of the leaves that it's a viburnum, a gilder rose. Quite different from say a, uh, a mountain ash which also produces red berries at this time of year. They taste absolutely um, vile. This is not what we use medicinally. Here we have a lime tree. You can recognise this by its heart-shaped leaves. It's a beautiful tree and smells absolutely gorgeous. It flowers around June and it is so smell, you'll see all the bees just hovering around, all the insects hovering around this plant because it just smells so beautifully, collecting the pollen. Lime flowers have been used for centuries, in, especially um, in France, actually famous for uh, being used in France, also known as linden blumchen um, or linden flowers. Um, Limes are used for feverish, you know, if you're feeling a bit cold, for feverish conditions. They're diaphoretic, so they help you bring up a sweat. Um, they're also used quite safely with children, if they've got a bit of a cold. Also, if they're feeling a bit anxious, lime flowers are very soothing on the nervous system. So if you've got anxiety or stress and tension, um, lime flowers are lovely. So used a lot in, in cold mixes and if children aren't feeling very well. They might be used as, um, for ch child insomnia as well, if you're feeling a bit, um, if you've got a bit of a, you're not sleeping very well, feeling a bit anxious, worried about school, lime flowers can be used. They're also used with um, hawthorn for high blood pressure as well, to help you just relax if your blood pressure is high because of stress and tension. Again, lime flower will just help you relax. Now the oak's a very sacred plant. There are about 500 different species of oak and have been used for centuries in herbal medicine. They say it takes 300 years to grow, 300 years to live and 300 years to die. Um, oaks are very astringent. Um, they contain a lot of tannins within the oak and in the olden days they used the bark of the oak. When harvesting the bark of the oak for its tannins, you would cut small sections in the bark and harvest the bark like that usually harvest in the autumn or in the winter. Um, but if you would harvest all the way round, then you would kill the tree. So it's really important to just take small sections. Now in the Second World War, there were reports of um, oak being used if you had a, um, a, a, an infection or if you, would, you know, had a wound to your leg, they would cut the bark and they would place that on the wound. And the tannins within the oak bark would precipitate and form a leathering of the skin and make it, the skin heal really quickly. But it's important to have got rid of the infection underneath, otherwise it would be bubbling underneath and um, the infection would still be there. Bark nowadays is used for piles to help shrink the piles down or, or you can um, grind up the bark and make a snuff from it and you'd use a little bit of snuff. It's used a lot for um, heavy nosebleeds or polyps in the nose and then you would use it as a snuff. The acorns have been used for centuries as well as a main source of food. About 70% starch is in the acorns and about 6% protein and again they would be harvested and uh, turned into flour. Some people make coffee with acorns. Um, it was also an important food for the pigs and the animals. Um, very important source. They used to make ink from oak, 
galls. And I've harvested some from a different tree. Where these, you'd find these galls that would be growing alongside of the oak tree uh, and they were due to a parasite and they would form a parasitic um, ball and sometimes it would be the larva of an insect coming out and it looks like there might be some strange ones happening here which are a completely different shape from parasite taking over. But if you crush these galls up and use iron oxide, you can mix them up with iron oxide and maybe some gum um, agar, you can form this um, fantastic black ink and the ancient manuscripts from medieval times were used um, um, ink from, made from the gold from the oak tree and is one of the reasons we still have the manuscripts and um, know so much about history now. The ash traditionally was used and it's a really beautiful one to recognise whether it's feathery leaves because it always has these lovely black nodes. I don't know if you can see them here. The branches, um, if you, you can cut the branches and hollow them out, make jewellery from them. But the ash tree was traditionally used for arthritis. I can't say I use it myself, um, but the ash tree was used for arthritis. And the new findings that suggest that the keys, the seeds that it produced, have been used for diabetes. I, um, the, and some tests have been done on animals that uh, would suggest that it really helps lower um, blood sugar levels quite considerably. So there's loads of research to be done, considering we've got quite an ageing population with diabetes. Um, it might be an important tree to investigate, but just it's also very sad that ash is so under threat at the moment. About 30% of the countryside is covered in, in, um, in ash. Um, you'd harvest the leaves in the spring, and again, you'd harvest the bark in the autumn, so you'd cut small squares into the bark if you were going to use it for arthritis. But to be honest, there's more research being done on other plants that I use, things like um, turmeric, devil's claw. There's much more research on those plants. And I think considering the ashes are under threat at the moment, um, I wouldn't want to use them. We need them all to survive, um, at, at least in, you know, until we get some more information about the, the up-to-date research on them and more planting schemes to grow more. I suppose that's the problem with many plants. It's whether the utilisation and the conservation can coexist. If plants are harvested at such a rate and we don't replant them, then we will lose our future cures and future medicines. This is the most sacred plant in that it has a medicine chest all of its own. This is the elderberry. And in the spring, we may harvest the flowers. Thank you. And it breaks off. If it wants to come, it just breaks off whew, very easily in your hand. And the elderberries are antiviral, high in vitamin C antimicrobial as well and the great tonic for the winter. Here we have the hawthorns. Now we use the hawthorn berries and the flowers. We harvest them this time of year. They're absolutely gorgeous. They used to be called um, poor man's bread and butter. If people were, um, if farmers were working in the field and they were a bit hungry, they'd nibble on the hawthorn. Mmm. Got a pip inside. And they're used to strengthen the heart and they act as a vasodilator as well, so they help bring the blood pressure down. I think they're just a really lovely tonic for the heart. I really enjoy using them and I just get really great results in lowering people's blood pressure. It's kind of one of the key ingredients that and maybe some dandelion leaf which are diuretic combination of the leaf and the flowers and um, maybe some cramp bark as we looked at earlier you'd harvest about four grams and you would dry them that would maybe be about four grams and you'd put a pint of water into that a pint of water boil them up for tape say 10-15 minutes and then you can drink that throughout the tree two or three times a day